It says you're going to hike in a remote area and you're located at point P1. You need to know the distance from P1 to P2 and also the direction that you should walk to get from P1 to P2. East is going to be the positive x direction. Point P1 is a thousand meters from the reference point and that's the origin so I'm going to I'm going to just draw what's given. They're saying that this is a thousand. And P1 makes a standard position angle of 120 degrees with the reference point. Standard position is always measured from the positive x direction, so we're talking about that angle there being 120. And point P2 is 800 meters away from the origin. And that has a standard position angle of 30. What we've established is two position vectors. And position vectors, if you recall, will point from the origin of the coordinate system to any point in the, in the plane. What we're trying to find, of course, is a new vector from P1 to P2 in order to tell the person like how to walk in order to get there. And we just want to use a little bit of vector mathematics to find that. Alright, so the instructions say draw your current position vector P1. I did that. This is uh, P1 here. Draw the desired final position vector P2. That would be that would be this. And the displacement vector P from 1 to 2 is what that means. So P1, 2 is this guy. We want to find the magnitude of vector P1, 2. Alright, so first thing I'd like to do is express P1 in terms of its components as a two-dimensional vector. Now, how do you do that? There's many ways. One of them is to break it up into separate components. So P1x would be found by the magnitude of P1 times the cosine of the angle of P1. And that's going to be an i-hat because we're talking about a, an x component. Alright, so what will that be? P1x is 1,000 times cosine of 120 i-hat, which ends up being negative 500. Now we want to find the vertical component of P1. That would be P1y. Alright, so P1y is P1 sine theta1. And that's going to be a j hat component. So a thousand sine one twenty. All right, it's eight sixty six. So I have this and this. Those components help me totally describe vector P1. I can even write it as component form. Vector form would be negative 500i plus 866j. All 
All right, I just want to do the same thing for P2. I just applied the standard component formulas for any vector. All right, so I'll just do it for P2. It's going to be P2 cos theta 2. All right, so that's... Eight hundred cosine thirty six ninety three and just do the same thing for P two Y six ninety three. So we'll have P2Y is 800 sine 30J. So P2Y, it's going to be 400. All right, now I have everything I need for vector two. So let's put it together into its components. I'm gonna put that right here, I guess. Six ninety three comma four hundred. All right, now we're ready to find a vector form or a component form for P12. Now, how would we do that? Well, you got to figure that P12 is what is known as a displacement vector. It's how you get from one point to another. P1 is going to be your initial and P2 is the final. So the same formula holds as before. We need P1 plus P12 equals P2. It's just an initial plus change equals final type of thing. But now we, we put them into uh, either component form or vector form to finally solve the problem. So, I feel like component form is a little more concise. It's a little easier to look at. So you have this. All right, so see what I did there? I just took the component form of P1 and I put it in place of P1 and I took the component form of P2 and I put it in place of P2 now what you want to do is the same thing we would have done with one dimensional problems is subtract it to the other side So you get that P12 is equal to, subtract the components, so 693 minus the negative 500, makes 1193. And 400 minus 866 makes a negative, negative 466. Those are the components of our displacement vector. All right, now, how could I have written that in vector form? I would have just done negative 500i plus 866 j plus p12 
equals 693i plus 400j. So see, they're kept separate by the fact that they're attached to different letters. All right, then you would just get rid of this by subtracting. As you can see, it's just the same process with a different notation. Oops. All right, so you get P12, it's 1193I minus 466J. Now, if for some reason you didn't, you didn't want to do component form or vector form, then you'd want to keep them all separate as like your x components on one side you could do your y components on the other so for the x components you'd say p1x plus p12x equals p2x and for the y you'd say p1y plus P12Y equals P2Y. And the P1X is the 500, negative 500. So put negative 500 in. We don't know what this one is, but we know our final X component needs to be 693. So put that here. Then for your Y components, you got 866 is your P1Y. And your P2Y is 400. So you always have that option of just keeping them totally separate and you don't have to deal with the more complicated notations. Anyway, in the end, you get P12X is 1193, and P12Y is 466. Uh, okay, so now we got to find the magnitude, P12. We put these lines around it to show that we're trying to find the length now of that displacement vector. What do I mean by the length? I mean, we got to find out how large is that vector if we were to just measure it from, from P1 to P2. The formula for magnitude of a 2D vector will be to take its, its x component, square that, and then its y component, square that. Then we just want to sum those and take the square root. Now P12's magnitude could be written in this complicated form, or you could just leave it with no vector over its head. Um, this means the magnitude automatically. So 1193 squared plus negative 466 squared. So P12 is 1281. All right, now we know how far the person has to walk to get to that P2. We also want to find, find the direction of the vector as an angle in standard position. So to do that, first we'll find a reference angle. formula is the arctan of the components as a fraction, but we just put in positive numbers for that. So we're talking about 466 over 1193, 21.3. 
degrees. Now our vector actually points toward the fourth quadrant. And so the angle we get is actually the angle it makes with the x-axis. So you have the option of saying that the standard position angle here would be negative 21.3, that would be okay. You could also do 360 minus 21.3, which is 339 degrees, approximately. And that would be just measuring it from the positive x direction all the way around. That is the 339 that, that it's talking about.